2011, you win 70.3 Worlds. A month later, you win Kona. Then March, first ever Ironman Melbourne, which mm. I think might be your greatest race. It, it, it might just because of the fact that it was you and Cam Brown and I think mm. and Nico Llanos and Freddie was up there. You, you had, yeah. it was like, but there was eight guys at some at some point where there was people everywhere. Yeah, it was, it was a good group. It had a lot of strength in it too. Luke McKenzie was in the group. Yeah. Paul Matthews, Joe Gambles, Greg and Bennett. Nico and Freddie. And Nico yeah. was there. Freddie was there. Yeah, it was it was the first year um, there were actually regional championships. So we only That's ever fun. really had Kona. We had Ironman racing and then Kona. Um, but in 2012, they brought in three regional championships. So Melbourne was the first of them. Frankfurt and, and North America, I think it was in Texas that year. Yeah, there was a, there was a little bit of pressure to perform as the reigning world champ. Um, and also, I think <clears throat> something for me that was very motivating was that they announced the week of the race that the, the trophies would be named in honour of two of Australia's greatest ever, probably Australia's two greatest ever triathletes, Greg Walsh and McKeely Jones. So... Um, the male winner would get the Greg Walsh trophy and the female winner would be awarded with the McKeeley Jones trophy. So for me, that was huge motivation because Walsh was actually down there watching as well. So um, it was a great race. Yes, we, I think eight of us got off the bike together. We didn't muck around. Um, I think no. We went through, <laughs> went through the first 10 kilometres in <clears throat> under 35 minutes. And we went through halfway in, I want to say about, 115 or 116. I didn't. I wasn't wearing a watch, but <clears throat> Frederick and Aniko had Garmin watches on, and they were beeping every every kilometer, and <clears throat> they were telling me the splits. And I'm thinking, oh, this is this is way too quick. <laughs> and uh, actually, Brownie, Brownie, it was Brownie's watch as well. Brownie's watch kept beeping, beeping, and he told me the splits we were running. And I thought, well, this is going to be fun, one way or the other. And um, yeah, I was just. So it's, it's funny, you know, because through your career, you learn different lessons. And I probably wasn't as physically fit as I'd been in previous races in my career, but I was very, very motivated to do well because of all the reasons that you sure. just talked about. And the power of the mind is, uh, it's incredible. It's such a powerful uh, ally. I guess it can, be your, it can be your biggest enemy, but it can be your biggest ally as well. So... Yeah, the last half of that run was all done on um, mental strength, motivation. My desire to have an Australian winner, because I thought, you know, for once, triathlon is the big story with all the other sports, cricket and football and motor racing. We actually had top billing. And I thought if, if an Australian can win the race, it'll, it'll be a bigger story for the journalists and for the media. So I felt a huge responsibility for our sport to try and win the race and, and make it a big story. But also from a personal standpoint, I, I just really wanted to win that race. So um, it hurt a lot, but I think I, I didn't, I got rid of, well, it was really Cam, Cam, Cam and Freddie were pushing the pace early and Aniko, but Aniko was the first to drop off, I think at about 10 kilometers. Yeah. And then finally Freddie dropped off at halfway or just after halfway and, you know, I just, I was on the ropes for a lot of the run. I thought, how, how can I get rid of Cam? I'm, that year was an interesting year because Ironman New Zealand had been shortened, shortened to, a, right. yes, to a half Ironman. And Cam, Cam Brown, I mean, Cam, he, he's the mayor of Taupo. He owns Ironman New Zealand. He's won it so many times. Yeah. And, and when that race was shortened, um, I think three weeks before Ironman Melbourne, and then he said he was coming over to do Melbourne. I said to my wife, oh, he's, gonna, he's the fittest man in the world in March every year. So I knew he would be very hard to beat. And he was. I, I, didn't, I didn't shake him loose until I think 35 or 36 kilometers. And um, I was just about to drop myself. Again, the power of the mind. I was half a step or two steps behind him and really just hanging on by a thread. And I thought, oh, I'm going to. I'm going to get dropped at any moment here. And next thing you know, he sort of dropped back a step and then another step. And again, my mind took over. It was just, it was so, such a funny dynamic. Like I think I was probably 30 seconds from getting dropped. Um, I'd been running at that limit. That's really uncomfortable for three or four minutes by that point, five minutes, hanging on, hanging on. And I was about to drop off and 
he then he dropped off. So um, I got a second, <laughs> I got a second wind and kept going and um, I ended up, I had to run a 238 marathon to, to get rid of him that day. Um, he ran so 241. <laughs> yeah. He did, yeah, incredible race. 